Hello, friends. Welcome to the Thrive Forward podcast. I am excited about today's episode. You see, I am a mom for those of you who are new to the podcast, but for those of you who have listened for a while or followed me along, you know that being a mom is something that is super important to me. And motherhood is a hard journey with many stops along the way. Today's guest, though, interviewed over a hundred individuals to put together her book, Choose Joy, Three Keys to Investing Your Time in Retirement. Babs Plunkett went on this journey of talking about retirement, thinking that she was going to have these conversations about how do we choose joy to get to retirement, when a lot of these conversations ended up being about many life transitions and one of them being experiencing the life transition of when your children are empty from the nest. They leave, they spread their wings and they fly. And as we start this new school year and going into that, many individuals are experiencing that for the first time because maybe their child graduated during the COVID season and ended up staying home for the first time in college and living at home and taking their first college classes virtually. And now maybe they're transitioning or maybe your individual is now leaving the nest for good for this time. What are those emotions that go through it? How do we self-identify? And Babs has three key takeaways for you that affect the entire being of yourself and how to choose joy, not just in a granola aspect of, oh yes, Pollyanna, choose joy every single time. But what are the tactical pieces that you can take with yourself to choose joy in your life and especially through those hard transitions? So tune in. And if you know somebody that is experiencing this new empty nest stage of life, send this podcast their way. It'll be a great listen. I guarantee it. Babs, thank you so much for joining us on the Thrive Forward podcast. I am excited to talk about this topic because I feel like nobody really talks about it. And it's something that anyone who has a child will go through at some point in time. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah. So thank you. Let's talk a little bit about your journey to where you are right now and why we are going to talk about empty nest syndrome in a capacity of the con- conceptualizing it into what is actually real in our lives rather than just something that might be scientifically said. Yeah. So um, emptiness syndrome itself mm. is a very extreme version of the feelings that most of us um, experience in empty nest. And so just in general, I mean, I didn't experience that myself, but as an empty nest mom, when I be- first became an empty nest mom, uh, you know, I was jumped on the hamster wheel of life and I was go, go, going. And I was trying to be the perfect wife, the perfect mom, the perfect worker. And it all looked pretty great on the outside until um, one five year stretch of time where I lost both my parents. I was hospitalized a couple of times and bammo, I just had to hit pause on life. And that hamster wheel life is just exhausting. Mm -hmm. And my kids launched at the same time. And so it was in this press pause time, it was a chance to really reevaluate who do I want to be outside of being a mom. And society really doesn't value motherhood very much or the role of parents very much. And so we don't talk about the, that deep ache that we feel when our kids leave, whether we were full-time um, you know, outside of the house working or full-time inside of the house, it's the same ache. You still, if you've got a kid, you identify yourself as that person's parent. So Mm -hmm. when they leave, it's really common for people to feel kind of lost. They feel like they're really not certain who they are outside of their role as parent. And, you know, they've got their job, but really the parent one is so big, heart deep. And also something people don't talk about is we spend uncountable hours on the soccer sidelines, whatever the sports or extracurricular your kids are in. And and those people know everything about your life. And then when your kids go, those friendships tend to fade into friends for a season, not because they weren't real friends, but what we had in common was our kids. 
So people feel mm-hmm. lost, lonely, and lacking in purpose. And that was me. And then you just kind of transcend into this element of being able to bring that topic to the forefront. I think it, it's almost like the pillars of each side of, of parenthood. I am probably, I'm at the beginning stages of the parenthood spectrum. I experienced a lot of feelings transitioning into that. And then going back to work and not being completely understood as a mom in my workplace. And now going into, you know, the active stage of life, you mentioned like who the active parents, like I'm, my girls are in competitive gymnastics and I'm like signing up to be like the gymnastics mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm signing up for, but I'm a lot of work I'm, probably, but it's I'm good. going for it. Well, I was, I was like, I was a competitive cheerleading coach. So I was like, I I feel like I know what it's like to do that. But the parent part of it is going to be like a totally different experience. Anywho, I digress. But Mm -hmm. now it's like, then if I can have the tools and resources to figure it out so that I don't end up in that space, because I have seen a lot of clients who transition at both of those stages when becoming a mother, becoming an empty nester. And then, you know, what are these stages of life transitions that we go through? What are common things that you see individuals when you're working with them or talking about this that are are commonalities between folks going through these similar life experiences? Mm -hmm. Well, one of the most common things, especially for women, but dads also who are super invested, is we pour ourselves out into our kids and their lives, and we pause almost everything else about our own personal interests. Mm -hmm. So whatever was our unique passions, um, our separate friendships outside of our the families that you start hanging out with all the time when your kids are, you know, in a competitive sport, it's kind of all your time. Mm-hmm. And those are, that all is lovely. But the thing that I think um, can really make a difference is to carry a thread of the core of who you are. Because what I hear over and over from people, especially women, is they feel like they left behind a part of them in motherhood that they they kind of can't remember who they were before they were a mom. Like, what, what did I used to like? And I hear it from men too. You know, I, especially as they're entering retirement, like I've worked since I was 14 years old. I don't even know what I like. And so this um, staying awake to your own personal passions, some th- your own independent relationships and friendships, uh, keeping your mind curious about things that are independently satisfying to you and fill you is um is a little bit of the secret into making that transition smoother when the time comes and also frankly staying more whole and not being exclusively defined by did my kids team win did they get asked to prom i mean we get so invested in these things that our our personal highs and lows ride with you know that famous thing of you're only as happy as your least happy kid and there's you know there's a mama heart truth that's always going to be true about that but when you have you know, continued to cultivate your own independent passions, there's, there's something that balances and tempers that. Well, and by the time our podcast airs in August, it's that crazy month of getting ready and prepping and going back to school. We see so much of that involvement as sports tick up or school ticks up or, you know, I, I experience this as a mother right now too. I think there's just a competitive nature with like how successful can our kids be? And when I had children, I vowed to myself, like, don't step into that space. Let your kids fall into whatever it might be. And my daughters are very different yet. Very similar. They are smaller versions of me. (laughs) And one is like my right brain and one is my left brain. One is very creative and one is very practical, but letting them live in that space. So as you're like looking at it twofold, those mothers who aren't quite empty nesters yet, what piece of advice would you have for them? And then a second fold as maybe it's some mom's first time not going back to school shopping, not yeah. doing those yeah. different, you know, things that they had done for so many years, signing up for the potluck for whatever sporting event it might be, whatever it is, 
in that fall time frame that might trigger some of those emotions. What would you say to that mom that's still in that space and then the mom that is in that first transition? Yeah, I mean, that's such a great picture that you paint because it's so real. That first back to school trip where you're not going to Target and throwing all, you know, the full list in is like, oh, okay. I mean, I half hated it, but it's also, you know, oh, it's gone. Uh, so what would I recommend? Um, I I think throughout your example of your daughters and their unique interests, if we could invest even a small amount of the energy in ourselves, that we invest in our kids in really tuning into what is their passion and what is the fullest way for them to live that passion, imagine what kind of a role model we would be for our kids if we did the same for ourselves mm. all throughout. Now, I, I've lived it, so I know how time-consuming racing to belly and gymnastics and blah, 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 lacrosse is and work. And the finding the time is hard. But is, especially as your kids get into high school, that they're less available. So that's the perfect time to reinvest in you and get really curious about what do you love to do? What ignites your interest? And begin to play with some ideas, begin to experiment. I definitely started doing that when our third kid was in high school. I'm like, I don't want to be that woman who's like completely lost at the end. Mm -hmm. And so started reconnecting with my passions that I had paused for a lot of years and to bring them back to life. I think that's so beautiful. And it is something as someone who experienced postpartum anxiety, uh, postpartum depression's ugly stepsister, as I call it, mm. I, I knew how important it was for me to even start that as early as just after birth, not even high school. Like, how do I, how do I do that? And what we role model for our children as well. One thing that I, um, my daughter asked me once, and I remember this, it was probably a bedtime conversation because they love to chat right before bed. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's every delay of bedtime. (laughs) And I remember a girlfriend of mine telling me like, treasure that time because there'll be a time where they don't want to talk to you at all. So I do, I treasure it because I know at some point they'll be like slamming doors um, in my face when they're going to bed. Although slamming doors does happen already. Um, She said to me, mom, why do you have to do like, why do you work out? Why do you have to work out? Why are you, why are you doing those things? And that was something for me that has always filled up my cup. Uh, And I physical exertion, showing myself how powerful I am um, in lifting weights or cardio or whatever it might be was something that was really important for me to do. And so we talk about filling up our cups Mm, uh, before we, you know, we fill up other people's cups. Mm -hmm. It, it, It is not my invention. Somebody else invented it. I just adopted it into my life. And I now live that piece out and try to model it for my, my children. I'm not perfect. I think that's the element we have to give ourselves to is grace Yes, because life just operates in such a crazy space and at so many different levels. But as a mom transitioning, because I do have a lot of folks on grad parties I have just attended yeah. uh, as we're thick in the season of, of graduation parties. What would you say to that mama for the first time? Maybe she didn't separate herself. And now, you know, she was the stage mom. She was the soccer mom. She was the president of the BTA. She was all of the things plus work, you know, on working full time and doing those things or, or running the household, whatever it might look, both honorable, honorable careers as well. Right. So, um, I have three keys. So I, I, when I was going through this phase, I thought I was getting, I thought I needed to understand how to retire. And so I literally interviewed over a hundred people across the country who others said were living with joy and purpose to figure out how to retire. And then I realized, actually, I was getting ready to retire from full-time motherhood and the ideas mm. were the same. And so the, the, the three things that I learned from a hundred people I interviewed across the country were this. Find something that engages your mind with with meaning or purpose. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be climbing the mountaintop. It can be something that just touches your soul, volunteering, being present for others. So find something to engage your mind, move your body. If you want to stay around on this planet, 
you got to move your body a minimum of 20 to 30 minutes a day is a minimum threshold. And that's, you can, you can do that. And the third maybe is almost the most important is find a way to connect with other people. Mm -hmm. The Harvard study on adult development said this shocking, shocking thing that loneliness is as powerful as smoking and alcoholism. Mm. We have an epidemic of loneliness and empty nesters just don't expect it to come. They know they're going to miss their kids. They just don't realize their friendships are going to shift. So I would say do find those three things, find something to engage your mind, keep your body in motion and find a way to connect with at least one other person every week to fill up your heart and make you feel you know connected to the bigger world. Yeah. And I, I think um, you bring up such a good point that, you know, now you will have more time to do some of the things or ignite the passions that you had before, or do the things that you won't. My mother-in-law is a great example of this. So she is a master quilter. Um, she might not say that, but I brag about her all the time. She's such a great quilter. She's so creative. And I'm like, when did you find the time to learn how to do this? She goes, Shannon, I didn't do any of this until the kids were gone. She mm-hmm. like went to quilting classes. She met these women in quilting class and now they're like her core group of friends and they go on quilting retreats and they have coffee every Saturday. And that's her way of staying in connection. And she told me that that thought process too. Like when we had kids in transition, she's cause I was missing some of my, my friends that I had pre babies and our lives just didn't align anymore because some of them didn't have children yet. Right. Or weren't planning on having children. And she said, you know, it's just a season. You're going to have all of these other friendships that are going to be there for that period of time. And then they're going to transition into other spaces too. And so I, I do feel like that is something that I have seen with my own eyes with clients as well as when they get to that place of, retirement or when their children leave, I've more oftenly seen it with retirement because I think some people, when their kids are gone, then get really busy with work again. And that's their, that that's their identity. And then when that work piece is gone, then that identity is gone as well. And then the loneliness gets really real. Um, in that space. Is that something that you found through those conversations with those hundred people, anything else that you found in, in commonalities with those? I love that you had a hundred conversations. Yeah, it was so awesome. Just so many, so many fascinating people out there doing living cool lives that they were like, well, I'm not that interesting. Why would you want to talk to me? I'm like, what a ballroom dancer on a teacher on a cruise ship at 78. It's pretty interesting. Um, other commonalities is they all faced extreme hardship, all of them. Mm. I talked with all of them about that. Like, were you just the lucky ones? They're like, oh no. They made up their minds to choose joy. That's the name of my book because I was so moved by that. Like, can, you know, can you can you do can you choose this or is it just a few people who kind of get lucky lives? Uh uh-uh. uh. They were all really clear that they chose it, and then you had to choose it again and again and again because you can't just. Um, rely on your body feeling good, your attitude being good. You really need to put in, they all um, actively built elements of their life that fed them. So when they weren't physically feeling good, these other things like you were saying with your mother-in-law, where she could show up on Saturday and have coffee with her quilting group. She had a trip to look forward to. She had a creative pursuit that fed her when she had time long stretches alone. Uh, All of them had stuff like that. All of them had built into their typical daily and weekly lives, ways to connect with other people, ways to ignite their brains with things that fed them and ways to give to others uh, and, and physically stay in motion. So yeah, it's, um, it's a practice. It's a choice. We get to choose. Yeah. I mean, on the flip side, I have my mom who transitioned me out of the house and then she transitioned into a caregiver for my grandfather. And then she transitioned into a caregiver for my father. So she never really had that empty nest because her, her caregiving mentality just ended up flipping and switching into different in phases of life. And I think that that can end up happening too. So if you don't find those elements of joy in transition, I talk about this quite frequently when we experience a life transition, it affects us in, in multiple aspects, but 
really with our relationships we talked about, right? Like our relationships will change. Who is a part of our lives might change. It might affect us financially. Um, An episode that I will also be recording the month year's heirs will be college planning and how to financially plan for that. But I constantly see with empty nesters as well is you've been spending so much money on kids and activities and things like that, that sometimes for some people, this is the opportunity to start catching up on maybe some retirement savings that weren't getting um, accumulated while you were paying for children as well. I've seen that happen, or now it's the time to be able to take the trip that you always wanted or travel the world or do those activities and those hobbies that you got back to. So affecting those financial aspects of things. Uh, We talked about the emotional part of things and um, our emotions absolutely are affected by life transitions. Was there any commonality from an emotional standpoint that you saw with the individuals that you interviewed? Um, Well, well, you mentioned joy. Yeah. You mentioned them choosing joy. They all chose joy and they, and they all, chose to be curious with life and their curiosity Mm -hmm. is what brought them joy. And I I think a commonality that they all have and that I want to say really loudly is often when we talk about purpose, it's this, you know, all upper case shouty, you know, big purpose, but there's got to be this, you know, climbing Mount, you know, Kilimanjaro or something. And for Almost everybody that I spoke with, their purpose came from a more thoughtfully uh, curated collection of passions and interests and ways of being in the world. And so sort of taking the pressure off that I've got to find this big thing. And it's more, um, I, I, for myself, I always talk about following the thread of joy in my life of which thing is giving energy and go give more energy to this positive area that is feeding me. And where, what, what does that unveil and how do I balance it with other parts of, you know, staying with friends and family and staying fit. And uh, so the commonality is they, they create, they chose a collection of things that they named as their purpose rather than trying to define some giant thing that um, they point at me on your lap as purpose, a little bit different. Or that there's like a cookie cutter response for everybody's purpose in the world. I mean, we just talked about that in July's podcast, that it's more of a vision for your life than finding this, like these specific goals or hitting, you know, every new year, we talk about new year, new you, all these goals, you get hit with all of these different things that you're supposed to do, but just finding the space that you have and being happy with what you have. Yeah. And, you know, the thing that I, that I work to do with my clients and in my course is you can be happiest with what you have when you are consciously choosing the things that match your values. Mm. You know, you don't need a whole bunch of money if the things that you have around you are the things that you value the most. And when we're chasing, that was me, you know, on the hamster wheel, chasing for more, chasing to be better, instead of just pausing and saying, what really matters? And then in a more grounded way, aligning my daily choices with what matters most to me. And that's where, that's where joy comes. I see joy as this soulful connection to the things that you care about and happiness being this more fleeting, you know, chased after the birthday balloon kind of a deal. So line your daily life up with the things that matter most and life looks pretty good. I love that concept. In fact, I, I weave that in as well. Um, it's funny how, how how similar our practices are and how we work with our clients, because I can I can I can make you money, I can grow your investments, but at the end of the day, unless you have the joy behind your life none of that stuff matters and Mm -hmm. maybe you don't need it. And that's also why I say financials are not financial planning in essence really isn't a cookie cutter approach because one person's joy and vision for their life might not mean they need this X, Y, Z dollar amount and somebody else's might mean that they do. And we can't look at our life or our finances or our transitions as the same as everyone else's. We can see similarities, but, you know, defining for our own selves, what joy means and how do we move in that space? 
Do you have any specific like takeaway pieces that you would like to share with our audience in terms of tips? I mean, you've talked about like the three elements of engaging your mind, your body and finding connection, anything else that you would like the audience to you know, understand and know more about in these specific life transitions of empty nesting and, you know, quasi moving into retirement as well. Well, I, I guess I just make an invitation um, to stay awake to your own, you know, your own heart whispers of what really matters to you. Yes, be live in the fullness of being the parent that you want to be, the worker you want to be. But listen, let the quiet whispers have a loud say in living the life that um, matches your values. And then know that even when it's hard, we get to choose and we can choose joy over and over. It is not easy. Some people are like, oh, you're such a Pollyanna. You know, it's you get to just choose joy. No, we all get to choose joy. And it's not that it's simple, but it can be done with intention. Yes. And there, just because we don't choose joy one day and we fall in a rut doesn't mean that we can't get back up again and make the choice the next day again. Yes. Um, we, For sure. it's, it's that exciting aspect that we do get a new day to be able to choose it as well. Well, Babs, thank you for sharing your insight and takeaways on uh, this topic of empty nesting and transitioning throughout our lives. And I, I love that you encompass the three really big aspects of our lives of, you know, in, engagement with others and engagement with moving our body and engagement with our mind to be able to keep active. You and I have a close connection of our families um, experiencing loss due to Alzheimer's. And we know how important those three things are too. I mean, I guess we could probably do a whole nother episode on that too. Yeah. Uh, and, and transitioning into that space. That might be a little bit of a teaser of a few things that we have going on in September as well. Uh, we're, we're featuring a lot of educational spaces on Alzheimer's as we do the Alzheimer's walk and um, mm -hmm. have some fun stuff coming up. But where can people hang out with you and learn more about your book and your community that you have? Yeah, thanks. So anybody that would like to hang out with some fun, um, joy-seeking people and you're in that empty nest, I have a free Facebook group called the Empty Nesters Joyful Purpose Club. I have a book called Choose Joy, Three Keys to Investing Your Time in Retirement. And I have a free um, training tool that's called um, the Starter Guide to Rediscovering You. And you can find links to each of those three things on the homepage of my website, which is just babsblunket.com. So lots of, I mean, I'm, I am just such a fierce believer in the power of uh, parents and the love they have to give and pouring it out into the world when you've got more time and space to get it. Yes, I love that. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. I greatly appreciate the opportunity for our audience to hear what you have. And I strongly encourage everyone uh, to, to give Babs a follow, join her group, especially if you're in that space where you are, are wanting to, to have that connection. I know some people, especially after COVID, are trying to figure out how do we make those connections again? And, and how do we grow, especially individuals who had a very different year last year, right? Our kids didn't get to have the same graduation. Some didn't get to have prom. Some didn't get to, you know, go off to school in that traditional sense of the word. So how do we, um, how do we create those connections with people who have similarly gone through the same thing too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you, Babs. Yeah, thank you. It's great chatting. <laughs>